In this video, we're going to talk about the theory of continental drift and uh, give some of the evidence that helps to support it. Now, continental drift is a pretty widely accepted theory that the tectonic plates that uh, the Earth is made up of, that our continents uh, are on, have been slowly uh, shifting and drifting until they've gotten to their present location and that they're still drifting today. This theory was put forward by a German uh, meteorologist named Alfred Wegener. And he proposed that there was, at one point, a large continent named Pangaea. And people always spell this wrong, so it can be a problem when you're trying to fill out a crossword puzzle. P-A-N-G-A-E-A. -A -E -A. And Pangaea was this one continent that all uh, of the land was, was massed together. And then it slowly broke up and spread apart over time. Now his theory was not very widely accepted at the time. Uh, but we've since discovered a lot more evidence that helps to support that theory. The first thing that Alfred Wegener noticed was the, that you, something that maybe you've already noticed uh, when you were young. Is that it fits together like a puzzle. The one that always got me is if you look at South America and Africa, it looks like it certainly would fit uh, really well into there. And so you could propose that and say, hey, I think they fit together because they look like a puzzle. The next thing they're going to ask you is, how does that happen? And he didn't have a really good answer for that. So he set out to find out some more um, evidence. He also found that there were matching rocks. So he found that uh, the rocks on one continent over here in South America, for instance, the, have the exact same types of layering in rocks that you would find here in Africa. And he noticed this all over the place. And it thought it was a awful convenient um, that the rocks would match. And the only way that that could happen is if the continents at one point were together and then broke apart. He also noticed that there was matching glacial scratches. Now living down here in Texas, we don't see glaciers. So a glacier is a large mass of ice. When I say a large mass of ice, I'm talking about uh, ice the size of a, of a city. And they would slowly slide, and when they did, they would scratch the rocks underneath them. And so here you can see these large glacial scratches. And what they found is that the scratches on South America and Africa and India, these scratches that we see right here would, would line up. Kind of like if you've ever watched one of those CSI shows where they're matching the, the bullet, the scratches on a bullet to see if it matches the gun. Uh, and then they can look under a microscope and see that, that the, the scratches line up exactly. Same exact thing. And they were able to find out that they did line up exactly on these different continents. Again, how would that happen if the continents hadn't at one point been moving? They also found tropical fossils. This is an example of one of those tropical fossils that they found down here, down here in Antarctica, the South Pole. The South Pole is freezing cold. It has no vegetation growing on it. It's covered in ice. How could there be tropical fossils if it was down here in the South Pole? Well, the answer is at some point during that drifting process, it was someplace more tropical where it could have vegetation growing. They also found similar fossils uh, around the world. So this is one of the ones that they uh, uh, always refer to. It's Glossopteris, this tree. Right? There is this same fossil found on all of these continents right? that are now spread all over the world. There's no way that this tree was able to swim across the ocean and land in all of these different sections. There's also another uh, very small dinosaur um, called a Mesosaurus, and they found it on different continents as well. So this small dinosaur which had no ability to swim great distances, how could it be on different continents if, it, if they weren't once together? So again, more evidence pointing that they were once together. One of the final bits of evidence that uh, helped to really solidify the theory of continental drift was magnetic pole reversal. And so Henry Hess was a U.S. Uh, captain in the Navy uh, during World War II. And he was doing uh, some scans of the ocean floor with a new technology called sonar looking for German U-boats, their submarines. And as he did that, they discovered that there was a mountain range in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which we did not know existed. And it ran the entire length of the Atlantic Ocean. And after uh, the, the war, because obviously he couldn't stop during the war, um, after the war, they came back and did 
some more research. And using this boat called the Glomar Challenger, they took samples of the ocean floor all the way across from Europe to America. Doing that, they discovered some evidence of a magnetic pole reversal. Um, and that evidence was in the rock. This was the final proof. This was like the DNA evidence that linked to a murder that really... Um, finally proved that the continents were in fact moving. Now, magnetic pole reversal is one of those things that people uh, often misunderstand. Um, the key thing for you to remember is that magnetic pole reversal was evidence. It was the evidence that the continents were moving. All right, there's going to be a separate video which goes over magnetic pole reversal in some more detail, but for right now, the key is that magnetic pole reversal was the evidence that pr finally proved that uh, the continents were in fact moving.